Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to animate background size cover and contain using GreenSock's unofficial background size plugin. Here we have a very large background image behind this text. If I animate to contain, you'll see that we can now see the entire background image inside its container. If we switch over to cover, it'll blow up just to be big enough to cover the entire element. I'll also show you how we can get these pixel dimensions for both contain and cover. And at the end, I'll take you behind the scenes of this demo so you can see exactly how it was made. Let's get going. First, I want to start out with just showing you the full size of this background image. It's actually 1200 pixels wide and 1600 pixels tall. And I have these red crop marks in the corners so you can see exactly where it's going to be ending. And I'm using circles so that we can easily detect any sort of like aspect ratio distortion. If we look at this at full size at 100%, you'll see it's actually quite big, okay? So we'll be using this big image as a background in our HTML element. Let's jump over to CodePen. In this starter file here, we have a single div with a class of BG image, and here is the CSS rule for it. You'll see we have a slight border on it. We're using viewport units to keep it responsive. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, we have a background color of pink and a background repeat of no repeat. All right, there's no image in there yet, but I wanted you to see how it behaves without the image. So let's just paste in the URL for our background, and then we're going to get this, okay? You'll see we have the top left corner here, and it's a very big image, all right, at 1200 by 1600 in this very small space. Well, first thing I wanna do here is center the image, okay? So I'm going to add background position, center, center. And now you'll see we have that sort of crosshair centered perfectly inside the div. And if I go to resize now, you'll see that it does stay centered, okay? And there's no distortion going on, everything looks good, okay? But what I'm gonna do now is walk you through the two background size properties that we're going to be animating. And the first one I'm going to add is background size contain. And now what you'll see is that we can see the entire background contained within the bounds of that element, okay? So when the element gets wider, what's happening is that we're still seeing this background image contained fully inside of it. And I can't really change the height inside the editor here, but what I can do is in the CSS, let me just make this like 30, viewport height units and what you'll see is even as the container gets squished vertically uh, we still have the entire background image contained inside of there so the next property that I want to show you is that we're going to switch this over from contain to cover and this is what we get regardless of the aspect ratio of the container it will always be completely covered by the background image so let's crank this back up to like an 80 viewport height units and again, you'll see that it's always completely covered. And we're going to make the browser window much bigger here. And again, it's always completely filled in or covered with the background image. And as I go squish down, it doesn't matter if it's totally skinny or totally wide, it's always covered. As you can see, these are both very cool and flexible settings. But what if we want to animate them? GSAP typically only animates numeric values. So what if we want to animate from contain to cover or even a larger scaled up version of cover? Well, that's where GreenSock's as of now unofficial background size plugin comes in. Let's jump over to the documentation. We're gonna scroll down until we get to our helper functions. And then in this awesome list of very handy helper functions, we're going to find animate background size, cover or contain. We'll click on that. And then we have some information that talks about this first BG size helper function, but what we're gonna do is skip past all that and go to the much more flexible background size plugin. In this demo here, when I click, it goes to a scaled up version of cover and then scales down to cover, all right? So what we're gonna do is use this plugin. So let's just go into the JavaScript. I'm going to select all that code, copy it, and then in my demo, I'll go into the JavaScript panel and paste it in. Now, what I did here was I grabbed a little bit more code than what I needed. So here, this is all the animation code from that demo, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And really, all we want is this code here that defines the background size plugin. 
and you have all this code in here and then down beneath it that plugin is going to be registered so now we're ready to basically use it once it's been registered now the great thing about gsap is that you can write your own plugins uh, but this is probably a fairly difficult plugin to study to uh, really get how that works all right so thankfully this is written for us and our animation is going to be really easy because we don't have to know really anything about what's happening inside there so before I go any further, I wanna go into my settings and I'm gonna disable the auto updating preview, hit save and close. And then I'm gonna to go to CSS real quick. And remember we have the background size of cover. Well, I'm just gonna get rid of that We'll do a fresh run, and now you'll see the uh, background there sort of in its centered default size. All right, so now I'm ready to animate. Let's jump into the JavaScript, and after all this plugin code that we don't really need to be concerned about, I'm gonna just create our first little tween, all right? We can just get that out of the way, and I'm just going to do a gsap.2, and the target is going to be my BG image element, all right? And then with the background size plugin loaded, I can just do background size and put in, let's say cover for now, okay? And I'm gonna put a duration of three seconds so that we have a little bit of time to watch it and enjoy it, okay? Oh, what's that? Hmm, that doesn't look like a very smooth tween. What happened there? Well, I know and I'm sort of glad it happened. Let's jump over to the console and you're going to see that you have this BG size failed thing happen, all right? And on CodePen, when you open the console, it sort of runs things again. So what's happening is that the background size plugin is actually trying to load that image so that it can get its native measurements, okay? So in order for background size plugin to figure out the dimensions of cover, it needs to know the normal or native size of the image. Since we're running this tween immediately when the page loads, that information isn't available. And by the time the duration of the tween sort of expires, um, it's a little too late. So in this case, there's two things you can do. Wait for a load event to fire so that you know the image is there, or you can tell the background size plugin the native width and height of the image in advance. So to do that, what we're gonna do is switch over to this object syntax, where I can pass in an object that has a size property and a native width and native height. Now when I do this, what you're going to see is that the image is gonna start at its native size once it's loaded, and then go down to that size of cover, okay? So there was no glitching at all there. Now, we may have seen that pink background really quick because again, the browser does have to wait for the image to load, but you'll see that when the animation starts, it's totally perfect and smooth. We can also switch over to doing a contain just to see what that would look like. And again, you're gonna get the same thing. It's gonna start at its native sort of size and then go all the way down to contain to fit perfectly inside this container. Now I'm gonna jump over and make this animation really long so that we have time to inspect it using dev tools. So I'm gonna do another run. And as soon as it loads up, I'm going to do my really quick right click and do an inspect. Where are you? I'm so slow. And look, you'll see the background size is happening in pixel values here as it's animating. And when it's done, let's see what happens. It is going to eventually, you know what? Maybe 20 seconds was too long, um, but I can keep talking anyway. We're, oh, there we are. You'll see it, boom, switches over to background size contain. So during the animation, it of course has to interpolate those pixel numeric values, but at the end, since it switches over to contain, this is actually really quite cool because now sort of CSS is taking over and we can resize that container and we're still going to be set with the contain settings, all right? So it's going to be responsive after the animation plays because it ended with that inline style of contain on there, okay? And let's just, you know, maybe say 20 seconds is too long. Uh, let's just go to a three second animation here and I'm gonna switch back over to cover. And here you'll see the same sort of deal that once the animation is done playing, we're going to swap over to cover so that I can again adjust things and it's totally responsive because the inline style is set to cover on here. It's actually really cool. Before I go, I just wanna show you a few more animation variations and another cool feature. 
So I went ahead on the background image and set the background size to contain, so that's the way it will be when it first loads up and renders. Now inside of this tween, I'm animating to a size of cover. So the background size plugin is going to recognize the sort of default value of contain and animate to cover. So let's see what that looks like at a wide size. There we go. All right, I did it wide because you can totally see then that it is contained at the start and goes all the way to that size cover. And of course, it's responsive after that tween. Now, another cool thing we can do here is that I can go to cover and also scale it, okay? So I can put in a scale value here of like four. So now it's going to not only start at contain, but it's going to sort of go to a oversized cover. So let's go wide again. I'm gonna do a quick run. We start at contain and whoa, we go up super big. Um, what's nice about this stuff is again, you know, we have all the power of GSAP once this thing is used as a plugin. So I can do a from tween here to sort of go the other way if I want. I can start from a really large background size and then animate down to contain. Ooh, that's pretty clever. And I can also go really funky and I can do things like from two tweens. So here I can have from settings where I start at contain at a scaled down version and animate up to a size of cover. So I'm just really showing you all the different options that we have here uh, so that you can use this tool comfortably and with confidence. So lastly, I wanna show you one more cool feature of background size plugin. It can provide the exact pixel dimensions of my background image when the background size is set to contain or cover. So in this demo here, the background size is naturally set to contain, so it all fits inside the parent div. And in my JavaScript, I no longer have any code, all right? So what if I wanna know the exact pixel dimensions of contain? Well, I'm gonna just paste in some code here and show you that I can tap into background size plugins get size method. I'm gonna pass in the element I want the background size of. So the size type here is gonna be contain and I'm gonna pass in the native width and height just in case the image hasn't loaded. So I'm just gonna go pop open my console right here and that triggers a rerun and you'll see that at this size here we get an object back with a width and height properties, okay? So if we want just the width, we could do BG size, which is an object dot width. And then the next time we run, you're just going to get the width value, okay? So this is just another cool feature that can help us do calculations that would be quite honestly, very difficult on our own. And I used everything that I just showed you in this video to make this cool little demo. Again, we have our very large background image here, perfectly centered and I can click on cover to switch it over to cover, and I can switch over to contain, and I can animate back and forth. If I'm at cover and I resize the browser window, you'll notice that it's fully responsive and stays in the covered state. And you can also see I'm getting the dimensions at the current cover size. This 395 by 527 is not the size of this element, it's the size that it had to shrink the background image so that it could apply the cover settings. You'll also notice that when I resize the browser window as the size is changing, that I'm updating the dimensions as well. If I switch over to contain, this 329 by 438 is this size of the background image right here that we see. Feel free to take a little poke around the code here. In a very quick overview, I'm basically looping through all the radio buttons, and when they change, I'm setting the size type to whatever their value is, okay? So in the HTML, my radio buttons have a value of cover or contain, so we're dynamically pulling that out, and then we're using a tween on the background image to set the background size to whatever the size type is. And then I'm also going to change the text content here to the size type. So you'll notice contain switches to cover and back and forth. As far as the dimensions go, that's a separate function that's also going to call background size plugin .get size, and we're going to pass in the size type that we got from our radio button. I'm adding a resize event listener here so that as I resize, I can of course update those values. Now it's important to note that the dimensions aren't changing when I'm resizing now. Why not? Well, changing the width of this container here is not 
changing the size of the background when it's set to contain. Everything's fine at that aspect ratio. It's staying the same width and height. But if we were to switch over to cover, clearly you will see the background image changes size and so do the dimensions, okay? So take this demo for a spin and please play with the background size plugin on your own. I'd be curious to see what you come up with. Have a great week. Do you want to gain mastery of the GreenSock animation platform through more videos like this? I'll show you all the tips and tricks I've learned over a decade of using GSAP, working at GreenSock, and teaching it to thousands of developers like you. My training is guaranteed to save you hours of frustration as you learn to add ultra slick animations to all your web projects. Visit creativecodingclub.com today to unlock the world's most comprehensive GreenSock training. And let me help you discover the joy of animating with code.